right, welcome to the February 10th Town Board Meeting 2015. I'm going to call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Please stand for pledge meetings. Pledge meetings to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. business is to uh, open up a, the floor for a public hearing on local law number one uh, extend the moratorium imposed by uh, local law uh, number one 2014 um, the text of the law is in the resolution um, tonight the purpose of tonight's or this piece of the meeting anyway is to open it up for public comment um, typically we have rules I'll read them very briefly um, extends to the purposes of the floor uh, at every regular scheduled town board meeting the public shall have the right to address the town board when a portion of the meeting refers to its privileges of the floor which shall take place after the report to the town department and supervisor Members of the public wishing to speak during privileges of the floor a sign a sheet before the commencement of the town board meeting indicating hers, his or her name, address, and proposed topic. Sign a sheet will dictate the order in which persons are recognized to speak and will assure the town clerk has the correct spelling of their names and addresses for the minutes. Members of the public are to restrict their comments to items of town business and are observed proper decorum while addressing the town board. Persons become unruly, who use inappropriate language, and who persist in speaking on items not related to town business may be asked, may be ruled out of order. Although there is no official time constraint and speakers may address one or more items in their comments, they should be considerate of others and try to limit their remarks to no more than five minutes so that all interested members of the public will have an opportunity to be heard. So I wanted to pause one second and move the, the lectern here so it would step up and talk. <laughs> so the same rules basically. Um, we're going to open up the floor now for comments on the local law number one extending the moratorium. And the C1, C2, and I zoning districts that typically require special use permits. So the floor is open. If you can step up, sit, state your name and uh, address, that'd be great. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Don Orr. I'm the 383 Bonnie View Lane. Uh, my comments will be brief. I had to write it down so I don't forget anything. Um, I've lived in Princetown for over 15 years now. When I moved here, things seemed similar to where I grew up. Rural, quiet, calm. The local government that was not trying to be like their counterparts in bigger cities or upper levels of government and playing politics. I feel this has changed and not for the better. I'd like to remind you just for whom you work. You work for us. The citizens of the town, whether we voted for you or not. When you swore your oath of office, you agreed to do just that. Work for all of us as one town to the best of your ability. I feel that many elected officials forget that. In reality, when you take elected office, you no longer get to have your own opinions. You get to have our opinions. You don't get to have your own thoughts. You can have our thoughts. You represent us. You also have to abide by any and all rules, regulations, policies, procedures, and laws that affect those thoughts and opinions and, and your actions on behalf of the town. Essentially, your hands are tied in many ways with doing town business or acting on the town's behalf. We are the most important aspect of the town, not you. You need to ask us what we want. Not just the few who manage to come to the occasional meeting, but the rest of us, too. I have come to many more meetings 
by a time we often have conflicts on Tuesdays and we can't usually make it. That shouldn't, however, preclude, preclude me from having my voice heard. Sure, I can contact you, but you can also reach out to see what we think as well. Modern technology can help. I checked the website today. Not all of you have emails listed. I'm curious why. Um, tonight's meeting was not actually listed on the uh, town web page. I checked, I couldn't find it. I'm a little curious about that. Uh, a case in point to support what I'm saying is the comprehensive plan. This document is your guide as to what we want you to do on our behalf. We have told you through the town survey what we want this town to look like and become. You don't get to ignore that or change your mind about it. You don't get to do, only do what some developer wants or what an individual wants. You only get to do what we want. The people of this quiet, rural community, they want to stay that way. I'm not against progress and updates. <coughs> Proper zoning for Hamlet Center with modest development sounds pretty good, as long as it's done intelligently. We elected you to do this and hope you are intelligent enough to work together, putting aside any personal or political differences, to do what's best for the town and the people who choose to live here. The creating the gateway to the town also sounds pretty nice. Many people I speak with don't even know where Princeton is, except for some bad press we've been subject to in the past two years. This might actually be a nice way to get us on the map. This town is way too small to be playing big city politics. We're all adults and know right from wrong. I only ask you to do what's right and best for the town the whole time. And I support the more time. Thank you. Thank you. Floor is open for additional comments. Good evening, I'm Jack White. I own White's RV here on Dwaynesburg Road. I gotta tell you, 20 years ago when I bought the property and um, talking to the town about developing it, they were very welcoming to those of us that wanted to develop anything that is commercially zoned in this town. Um, we've already changed the zoning for the town, and I wrote a letter about reading the um, Hamlet district report, the changes that were recommended, and uh, we felt that Although this is quaint and idealistic, it's not realistic. When we know the understanding and need for zoning, we do not feel any further restrictions to Route 7 or Route 20. It's in the best interest of the town, its residents, or its businesses. These are major highways with lots of truck and vehicle traffic. Making the changes recommended is not going to change the amount or type of traffic traveling on these roads. The businesses that have chose to operate here and the ones that are succeeding chose this area because of its location and its traffic flow. <clears throat> the businesses that exist on Route 7 and Route 20 in this town don't even fit the vision of the new uh, comprehensive plan that you have for the Hamlet. According to the town's own comprehensive plan, we only have 2,000 acres of commercially zoned property in the town. All of that commercial property is on Route 20, Route 7, and a couple acres on 5S. That's less than 1% of the property in this town. Only 5% of that commercial property, the property of 100 acres is actually developed, has operating businesses paying taxes here. And looking up and down Route 7 and Route 20, I see for sale signs up and down there, numerous pieces of property, They've been trying to sell their property for years. The types of businesses that this new report is attempting to create do not exist because this area is not conducive to attract such businesses. If it was, they would already be here. 
Businesses look for areas that they will be successful in, an area that matches their needs. The existing zoning districts and laws that are in place to accomplish protecting the rural settings of the town of Princeton. We already have special use permits. The process that will impose controls to minimize and avoid any of the impacts related to certain uses which may, may be incompatible with the surrounding use and unless conditioned to ensure stability with the neighborhood in which they are located. And that's out of the old comprehensive plan. We ask that you realistically and responsibly consider what little commercial property there is in the town. With our current zoning and rules, the town has enough control to match the types of businesses that will succeed while blending to the area environmentally as well as the traffic type and flow of traffic in the town's goal to have the gateway to Prince Town. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are we open for conversation? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I don't want to prepare something, but I do want to just put in my two cents. My name is Christine Walters. I'm right next door to you. This was once part of my family's farm, where this land is right now. It was originally a 75-acre dairy farm owned by Jacob, um, by Nicholas Vetter. Jacob Vetter's, Bertha Vetter's wedding picture hangs right here in the hallway. Um, they built the house that I live in. Um, I moved here 18 years ago from New York City, so this was quite rural to me when I moved here, as you can imagine. Um, in the 18 years that I have been here, those of us that live in Princeton know that this has changed an awful lot. Um, when I used to get off that throughway, traveling back and forth to New York City, back up home here, it was what was once a very quaint kind of a rural setting. And that has changed. The feeling of the area has changed. A big part of that, I believe, is the truck stop, especially considering that we see trucks backed up at any hour of the day, kind of making a little bit of a difficulty getting to and from what is one of the main gateways of Princeton, as we're calling it. Um, our property, we back when it was originally zoned commercially, was when my husband and I had the conversation. You know, the family's been here a long time, but there's going to be quite a significant investment in this home that was built in 1850 if we're going to stay in it. And if it's zoned commercially, then maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to put that kind of money into this age of a home. And maybe it's time for us to consider staying in Princeton, but going a little bit elsewhere and just feeling off the market. Um, we priced it high to begin with. It's been on the market now for seven years. We've changed that price as time has gone on. We've gotten, we're down pretty low right now for the entire property because my mother-in-law's health and um, ability to live in what is, was once the carriage house is affected by our decision too. Um, I guess my question is regarding the idea and the picture of a gateway with the Hamlet idea, having been on the market as long as we have with three different realtors, I don't see any of those people coming and showing an interest because we do keep in touch with the different realtors. So um, regarding a change in that kind of a zoning, I am concerned about what that means. And I also, I work in downtown Schenectady, I'm a registered nurse. The people I work with, when they say, Christine, where do you live? And I say, Princeton. Honestly, most of the people I work with say, where's that? There's one person that knows where Princeton is, and she lives in Delanson, because she drives right by my house. And they know that I'm that old farmhouse next door to the state troopers. Um, it's visible. My concern, I think, as we move forward, too, just on a personal note, is what I don't like the idea of, but we kind of are boxed in because of age of the home, et cetera, and the decisions about the zoning, and what we thought might end up next door or across the street or down the road, which kind of really honestly affected our decision to invest in the home, um, is that eventually we're gonna be known as, oh, that old falling down house and that old falling down barn next to the state troopers. And that will be what people think of as the gateway of Princeton, at least from Route 7. And it would be unfortunate, but right now we don't have can't say that we have anybody in any area that's knocking our door down to make this what Princeton would like it to be. We're open for that 
but I do want to speak up for my neighbor, Jack White, a, a good, hardworking, honest businessman who's built an honest business, and it would be a shame for him to be boxed out of an ability to sell that someday, should he choose to do so, in a manner that he would see fit. That's all. Just My name is Melissa O'Reilly. I live on South Kelly Road. I've lived here for nine years. And I haven't been involved in the politics of the town much of what's going on. I'm here because I'm hearing that there's a lot of politics going on. Um, I just wanted to mention to everybody so that you know, I was on the original comp plan committee, and that was in 2007. And that was before my son was even in my belly. <laughs> and he's going to be seven next week. And I know that they only just were able to pass that. Did it take seven years? Is that right? Yeah. So I may not be very involved in exactly what's going on, but I do know that a lot of people worked very hard to write the town plan. And I think that they also did their due diligence. They had attorneys involved. They had town meetings. They had a lot of chance for everyone then. And I really wasn't even involved through the end. So I. Um, I just wanted to make a note that I think a lot of people worked hard to write that comp plan, and if it needs to be followed, then, you know, seven years went into it and a lot of people's efforts. That's my note. Additional comments? John Proper. I live on 3717 Scotch Ridge Road. I also own property on Pangburn Road. I have a business there. And when I purchased the property from my parents, it was zoned commercial. And unbeknownst to me, it was changed to residential. No notification. The notification of this town uh, public hearing came in today's mail. Pretty short notice. Well, anyway, I'm just curious what this would do to my business on Pangburn Road. I've already been told that if I was to sell what I thought was commercial property to someone, they would have to get a special use permit to have the same business that I have there now. Right now it's residential with a incidental business. I don't know if you know what that means. <laughs> but if someone was to buy my property, which I thought was commercial, and wanted to have a business such as I have, they would have to go through the process of a special use permit. And I feel that uh, with the zoning change, I've uh, lost some equity in my property there. And uh, I don't know what this comprehensive plan would have or this Hamlet plan would have on my property on Bangor Road. And maybe I can get an answer tonight. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Additional comments. A lot of people, so everybody can speak up. My name is Larry Sloman. I live on South Kelly Road. I've lived here for 37 years. Uh, I haven't really kept up with. Uh, what's going on too much, unfortunately. I got a notice in the mail about this. The, the one thing that seems to me is that people move to this town because uh, they like the nature of it, and I don't think many people want to see a lot of changes to it. 
Uh, I think they wanted to keep its, its rural nature and I don't really care if somebody in Albany or Schenectady doesn't know where Princetown is, that's fine. <laughs> okay? So I, I think if you want to make any kind of changes, I think, you, I, I think you need to be darn sure that all the people in the town uh, are aware of it and uh, are on board for these changes. Thank you. Stands up 383 Bonnie Lane. Uh, I've lived here 45 years and I have certainly seen uh, an amazing difference in the nature of the town. But uh, as much as I am in favor of the moratorium, let's give the comprehensive plan and the planning boards and the zoning boards a little bit more time to figure out what they want to do, what we want to do. Uh, and as much as I'm just a person and I like the idea of a hamlet, I do feel very strongly that the businesses that have worked so hard to become viable businesses, uh, they absolutely need to have the respect of the board and protect their equity in their, their businesses and their property. I just think that's only fair. My name is Doug Thorpe. I'm a 12 year member of the planning board. I'm a current member of the planning board, and I sat on the last comprehensive plan when it was approved in the town. A um, couple of things. Um, when we reviewed the McLean subdivision, we thoroughly reviewed it for the special use. It met the criteria then the special use was issued. Um, when it was went up for renewal, there was a two-year hiatus. I was not on the planning board until this past January. I was reappointed. So I wasn't there for the review of the reissuance of the special use permit. Um, during our discussions in the comprehensive plan, it was our intention, and I feel strongly that when we talked about a hamlet district in this town, it was for the purposes of being in a small rural area, not in a 55 mile an hour corridor. It was, you know, it was our intent to be in a Mayberry type corridor uh, where people could walk safely on the streets and have parades in that Hamlet district. Uh, I did some researching on Hamlet districts throughout the state. The average speed zone in a Hamlet in New York State is between 30 and 35 miles an hour. The zone that is gonna be created for the Hamlet district now is in a 55 mile an hour zone, and that zone goes from the town of Rotterdam line to the town of Duanesburg line. The Hamlet is proposed is gonna be from the town of Rotterdam town line to the I-88 bridges up the roadways. So we have tried for years to have the reduction in zone, speed zone change on this corridor here. DOT always denies the reduction in speed zone. In the town of Claremont, they've been trying to get that zone reduced to 30 miles an hour for 20 years with no luck. Uh, very, very difficult to get a, a, a speed reduced in a main third door thoroughfare like Route 7. So, uh, like I said, the intent of the Hamlet and keeping Princetown rural was our intent on the comprehensive plan. It was not our intent to decimate the commercial district. And nor so uh, creating a Hamlet district in this corridor 
would change that. I think it was imposed for a specific reason to exclude a specific business at a specific time. There are some criteria for a moratorium. One of them is balancing the benefits and detriments of the moratorium to the municipality. And a municipality should be prepared to show that the burden imposed by the moratorium is being shared substantially by the public at large, which means the whole town. And not just a few in this corridor, but all the residents in our town. Um, there are other areas in the town. Uh, in January, a resident came in to build a building on the western edge of Route 7, uh, 2,400 square feet building. Cannot build it because the moratorium is in place. It was professionally designed, it was professionally engineered, and this person's hands are tied now, as is everyone else in the commercial district. The C1, the C2, the industrial zone, not just commercial businesses this affects. It affects residential occupancies. Anybody that wants to build a garage, a shed, any building of any kind in the C1, the C2, and the industrial zone throughout this town cannot build anything without seeking relief through a variance from the town board, and that is a process that takes time as this person who wants to build this building is going to experience if he gets the approvals in the planning board. So we must look at closely of what the purpose of the moratorium is. Is to one, is it to, to stop a specific, excuse me, to stop a, a specific business or is it to provide protection for the town and the residents at large so I'm all for and we discussed in length on the comprehensive plan to keep the characteristics of Prince Town rural and we worked hard at the comprehensive plan long and hard. A Hamlet zone is a good idea in this town. But it's not a good idea in a commercial corridor at 55 miles an hour. Children can't play on a sidewalk at 55 miles an hour. So I would not be in favor of extending the moratorium it's not even extended. It was expired in December. It's actually, I would think, a new moratorium because the time limit has expired on the moratorium that you guys put in place and extended. It expired in de December. So uh, that's some insight on what we discussed in comprehensive plan on the Hamlets to keep Princetown rural. So thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Mark Carandy, and I'm on 1807 Dwaynesburg Road. And I came here tonight to express some of my feelings about um, the moratorium, number one, and the comprehensive plan uh, from what I've heard. Um, I think that most of the residents in this community 
live here because it is a rule. And um, I also believe that, you know, we like a little freedom without government looking over our shoulder for every little move we make. Um, I think that this Route 7 area here is, I mean, if you drive up Route 7, you'll see that probably 75% of the property is already uh, inhabited by people that have been here for generations, some of them. And um, I just don't ever think this would be uh, like Gilderland or um, Clifton Park or any of those communities. I think that most of the people that are here are pretty much here to stay or their families in the future are here to stay. And because of the situation of what is up Route 7 right now, I mean, how are we going to make this more commercial? You know, we're, we're not, I don't think the citizens are here for that. I think we pretty much like it the way it is. Um, and that's my feelings on it. So, thank you for listening. Thank you. More comments? So a couple, of, well, as final call for comments. Okay. So I'm going to close uh, the comments on the moratorium. Oh. So actually, yeah, sorry. Um, so there are some written comments and then some past comments from uh, previous board meetings and letters. Um, this one's particularly from the Prince Town Planning Board. Um, dear Town Board members, on January 22nd, 2015, at a regular meeting of the Planning Board, the subject of the proposed extension to the town's moratorium for six additional months was discussed. The majority of the board indicated they are in favor of the extension of the current moratorium. This is really Carol McLean, Planning Board Chair. I'd also like to, and I don't have them with me, but I can probably print them, is we've had support and letters from previous planning board meetings from a number of citizens and residents. Um, so can I hand them tonight, or? Can I print them? Well, they're, they're not here. You can keep the public hearing open to receive the right comments. I'd like to propose that we do keep the moratorium open and the public hearing open um, for, for a number, well, for at least two reasons. Again, to solicit any written uh, comments from the residents who may not have been able to make the, uh, this meeting. I know it was, and I got to look into a couple of the concerns that the town board meeting wasn't on the website and it should have been published in the Gazette. So uh, I'll take that as an action to understand uh, what's going on there. Um, But so, again, to solicit any additional comment uh, via email or just written letter to the town board, um, the second piece I'd like to suggest to the town board is, I mean, the reason for the moratorium was to give 
the comprehensive plan, the comprehensive plan <coughs> passed, and then so we weren't in conflict um, with the plan to put the moratorium in place. So the ZRC, chaired by Paul Golden, I'm not sure if Paul is, but he's here some other years. And his ERC committee, the reason you know, to, uh, to develop the Hamlet as the majority of the residents uh, surveyed wanted. So it took a little bit of time. Um, that proposal, the proposed Hamlet, is complete. Um, as a matter of fact, on tonight's agenda, we're proposing, I'm asking the board to um, let us hold an informational session two weeks from tonight for. Paul Golding and his ZRC committee to present formally, you know, a formal meeting with charts and you know uh, overheads, etc. So I encourage the the community to come to the meeting and then, you know, because it sounds like there's a lot of you know I heard this, I heard that, um, not quite sure. So Paul and the ZRC will be presenting in two weeks. The public is more than welcome to come in and provide its comments. And I'm asking the town board to, again, at least reserve uh, and keep the public hearing open until next month's meeting, um, where we can hear, again, additional comments from the public and then uh, also solicit any uh, written comments we may receive in, you know, between now and then. Um, do I need a resolution or just a request to keep it open? Yeah, we have a resolution, of course. There's no objection to the public hearing. Okay, I'll give you that. All right. Doug, you okay with uh, keeping this open until uh, giving the town an opportunity to listen to the presentation and uh, again, solicit any written feedback we can from from the residents, either pro or con, on the subject. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Mr. Joe? Fully in favor. <coughs> Mr. Blue? What about people, uh, since the moratorium is off, ended in December, what about people that are coming and applying for permits, want to build a garage or do something? There's no moratorium. Right? I, I don't There's no moratorium, they ought to be able to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Is that just the answer? I don't know. If there's no moratorium, I don't know. Why hold them up? Sorry? Why hold them up? There's no moratorium on now, it's done December. But any of those applications would have the applications that require a special use permit, so they would have to be going before the planning board anyway. So if the planning board just had a meeting, there's not going to be a planning board meeting until just before well, the next town's special use permit to build a garage or but the only thing that the moratorium is on is those projects in a C1, C2, or I zone requiring a special use permit. So the moratorium wasn't stopping anybody from doing anything that didn't require a special use permit in the first instance. So, but if you do require a special use permit, then you have to go before the planning board. So the chances of anybody getting anything <coughs> done between now and then, between the next meeting, pretty much non-existent. And there is a cl clause in here, right? If they do need special use, they can approach the board? Well, when the moratorium is in place. So you have... Oh. Somebody what about somebody who just wants to put up a garage and uh, put an addition on their own, as I'm saying? Or Route 20? somebody just uh, for a garage needs that because the even the accessory structures and I think that, uh, that uh, they speak of in a moratorium are 
ones associated with projects that require a special use permit. So that uh, is generally not the case with somebody putting up a garage. Or an addition on their home. Or an addition on their home. Those are generally not, not things that require special use permits. So I guess we're just asking this for, you know, the, again, the objective was to allow the ZRC committee to finish their proposed panel division. It's, it's complete um, and give it time for the, for the residents to come and listen to Paul's uh, presentation and, you know, get a little more of an informed opinion on, on what they're doing. Two weeks from tonight, and it's in the resolution here. Uh, Paul's going to Paul Bowling um, is going to present the formal Hamlet Division um, District. District. <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying. I don't know what I keep saying, but um, so I encourage you guys to uh, you know the residents to come in and again listen to what the proposed district looks like. Um, I know Paul and them have solicited, you know, a lot of input from some developers. Um, so I'm sure they're not making suggestions that's going to cost them any any loss on their investment. So okay, so if it's okay with the board, we're at the table list. We'll keep the uh, meeting open till four weeks from today. Same for the first 20 days. Okay. Good question. Thank you, sir. You now need to change the wording of this resolution from extension to creation of a new moratorium. This is not an extension anymore. I'm going to defer to the guy who's job that is. Thank you. Thanks. I think I've Okay, so we scratched extension. Thank you, sir. All right, on to business. Mr. Joyce, in the letter that you sent, 
which we got in the mail today, mm -hmm. said that Mr. Golden was going to do his presentation tonight. Mm -hmm. And that's what the majority of these people are here for tonight. They were not aware that it was put off for another two weeks. That's true. So I will take the responsibility of that. I thought in my conversation with Mr. Golding that he indicated he would be ready. He's not ready. You had to send that letter out a few days ago in order for us to get it today. Understood. Did you us all around basically for tonight? That's the idea. Wow. Okay. Um, Mike, I wasn't aware of this specifically said we were going to make that presentation tonight. And if I, I recall what I wrote in that particular piece, which did not say that, um, the proposal itself is on the website. And for those who don't feel I'm the most compelling or exciting speaker, in the house, I would really suggest also, although we will have pictures and we will explain and try to be as interactive as possible in two weeks, that I really would encourage everyone to take a look at the actual wording of what we proposed. At the previous town board meeting, uh, I spoke for about 20 minutes and gave an overview of it. And we passed out basically the document itself and the maps that were attached to it. And said also then too, it's already on the website and we love because in anything like this, and when we're talking about Mr. White, and that there's no intention of basically hurting anyone. The devil is in the details, which specifically is the area it's a question that the town has to resolve. There it is not, I think, a person in this room who feels more strongly about keeping this a rural community than I do. But I think probably the best way, having already given an overview of it, having passed it out, and having put it on the website, is to do a full-blown presentation. That's what Mike suggested to me. And I said, well, I can't get that together in a couple of days, but I'll be more than happy to do it, I thought it was going to be next week, but in two weeks, whichever. I can get it by next week if you want. But it sounds like you want it in two weeks, and that's fine. I'm not prepared because I don't have any pictures and slides mm -hmm. tonight. And I think you might find it more informative if you got the whole thing at the same time. My understanding was that the purpose of the meeting tonight, well, it's a regular town board meeting, but the, the, the subject was the, the question of the moratorium tonight. And the reason for the moratorium had always been that we have the chance to implement the comprehensive plan in the form of what we did at the ZRC. And we, we finished that. The first take until you all read it and give us your opinion of what you think is wrong with it and how it can be changed and made better. So that's where we stand on it. And by the way, Doug, we, we were on the same committee. I was the chair of it at that time. And that was the, the two locations that were that we suggested are in the comprehensive plan that you were on the committee of, just to keep it straight. But in two weeks, again, I owe six responsibility. People are disappointed. I'm truly sorry. I did not expect that this would be an issue of doing this tonight. Well, with all due respect, I mean we're at, we're, we're, we're 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 considering. The moratorium tonight, not the Hamlet district tonight. Right. Excuse me. Right. right. So I mean, his presentation of the Hamlet should is is a different legislative agenda to to the to the moratorium. Absolutely. It's two different. It's two different yeah. issues. Yes. Yeah. So his presentation for the Hamlet is independent for your action on the moratorium. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. However. Yes. In this notice that came around, and Mr. Goldings, yeah, well, I understand. It says here, I plan to give a full presentation in the new Hamlet district 
to the town board on February 10th at town hall. And so that's why we're here. Can I see what I'm going to say? So, Open the door. No, I so, Lisa, all due respect, we closed the floor, but I'm going to open up privileges in a minute. Yeah, I have one. So, it's still open. Okay, okay, okay. okay. it's done. Mike, Mike, uh, forgive me, but my presentation ended with the words, an even nicer place to live, because I remember writing it, and I've got a copy of it on my computer. This paragraph at the end got added by someone. You? Someone. Is that sorry? Whoever it was. He's sorry. I'm cool. I don't what? appreciate you. I mean, he's sorry. Huh? Okay. Yeah. He's sorry. He's sorry. But I didn't. But I'm sorry. Step up, do me a favor, Lisa. Step up. Let's have one meeting, folks, please. I just had a quick question. Just say your name. Do the you know. Lisa Crandy, Dwayne's Berkeley. Thank you. Uh, the newsletter. Correct. Why didn't it go to everybody? It should have went to everybody. We never got one. I never got one. Is it from the town that it was? Is it a town that it No, actually it's not a town that it was, so you'd probably be very clear about that. Okay. Uh, I, I was just wondering. Thank you. I didn't get one. Who is it from? Who is the newsletter from? Yes. Oh, Whose name is on it, though? Okay. Thank you. Okay, All right. so it's not, also not an official one of those. Right. So, again, I'll take the responsibility for the mistake. But, okay, so the floor is closed on a moratorium. The board agreed to extend the public hearing for a month to begin to take written comments on the moratorium. Lou? Uh, you're asking the people to come in two weeks again, then you're asking them to come when we vote on it. I think you could do this all in, a, in a, a one meeting on the general uh, on the second Tuesday of the month, rather than asking everybody to spend their time coming two different times. I'm not in favor of that. You're asking an awful lot from the people to give up their time to come here, and they're not even, that's all they're gonna do is hear about the moratorium, or nope. about the uh, Hamlet District. And we're not even going to be discussing it until the following month. Discussing the Hamlet district or and voting on the moratorium. I don't think that they, the people should have to to, uh, to attend two different meetings in a month. It's an informational meeting. You know, um, that's my yeah, that's my opinion. I don't know what the rest of the board thinks, but that's Can my I say opinion. something, Mike? Sure. Based on the really great response from, from this public hearing tonight, some wonderful comments, I think that we owe the people of Princeton the opportunity to come and understand what a Hamlet district is with the mixed usage, commercial and residential, to open up this gateway. Uh, you know, so to give Paul the opportunity to explain all the work that his ERC did is it's not an imposition it's an opportunity for the town to really understand what's going on so then at the public hearing next month when we close it any comments that come on hopefully people will have a different set of comments you know after they understand what's going on so that's what my feeling is I'm a, I fully support <coughs> This is, as had been noted before, this is seven years in the works. <coughs> uh, it's pretty important. And, you know, again, my apologies for the miscommunication. I own it with my fault. I don't take the responsibility for it. But it's still very, very important. You know, it's not a done deal. You know, Paul and his team will take comments pretty important so you know again I'm asking your your pardon here uh, my mistake 
but one month extension. All I'm doing, is, all we're asking is to keep the moratorium open, the, this public meeting open. We're not voting on anything tonight. We're not voting on the Hamlet. That's not even close to getting voted on. Um, we're not voting on the moratorium, yes or no. We're just saying we want to keep the moratorium, public hearing open, and give Paul and his team, the ZRC, um, along with, I guess, I'm assuming some of the planning or the comprehensive uh, committee, past and present, and again, the whole town a chance to commit and participate in this. That's all we're asking. That's all I'm asking. I, again, I'll fall on the sword here and say, you know, I made a typo. I misunderstood in my conversation with Paul. Again, my responsibility. But that's what I'm asking. So the town board seems okay. I'll, I'll ask again to leave the public hearing open for another month. Doug? Yes. I thought we did too, but I just wanted to you know be as open as you know communication here as possible. Joe? Yes. Lou? Yeah. Okay. And Bob? Yes, I would like to say though that uh, not your apologies accepted, but I was under the impression that Paul was done. We were listening to his thing tonight too, and uh, I I understand what the people are saying. So, but your apologies accepted, and thank you. We'll do what we have to do. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be worth it, folks. I know it'll, the resolution will also, you know, we'll videotape it and it'll be up on the website again. It's, it's pretty important, you know. Uh, uh, I wouldn't have gone through all the trouble if I didn't think it was important enough to to try to notify as many people as possible, saying, you, you know, this is a good piece of the future of the town. You, you need to try to participate or at least listen. Could I say one more thing? That article, I wish that everybody would have gotten. So, I didn't get it. Who set who set that paper up? Is that uh, it's immaterial. I don't know, but you know, I didn't get it, and it would be nice for everybody in town to get the same information. I will check on it. It's got my name on it, so it's fine. I own it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to current business. Uh, Nick Moore, senior here. Yeah, Nick Senior? Oh, no, Junior. All right. So the only thing I, you know, I want to touch on with Nick is, you know, we put money in the proposal, or uh, the budget this year to do um, Willow Run, Shag Bark, and Princeton Plaza. So, you know, I try to get in contact with Nick and try to get firm price quotes for, for those three. Could have one meeting, please? Um, and see how that looks for the summer. Uh, Water Department, I got a note from George, he had a pipe break, so uh, probably like all the other communities, didn't deep freeze, so he won't be here tonight. Uh, town Planner, no report. Code Enforcement. <coughs> Your turn. Yeah, no. A lot of snow, nobody wants to build anything. Yeah. Going it's going to be a while before yeah. we're going to drive one for you. Come on, please, folks. One meeting. Yeah. Uh, I know the video is having trouble here, so we can one meeting. So, two action items uh, if you look into, Nick. I know we talked about special use permits. Um, and then I received a note from 286 Vernon Drive of a zoning violation. Yeah, um, I just got the that that's those that runs it down. Is only violation with the duplex? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got the pad up. Talk to her. She's going at it. I can't hear you. Pat. I can't. I still can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. I got to look into it. But Thank you. I just found out about it tonight. Okay. Good deal. Uh, justice. Um, Two things, I got this today, so I'll run off copies for you. So, Judge Norm Miller was approved for a grant for $2,000 approximately, maybe a little more, a little less, for a surveillance system for cameras. So I'm gonna ask the board, I know Lou was on your 
one of your things to do list was to put the cameras in town hall. So I think the cap cost was forty five hundred for his quote, so I'll be asking the town board if they can approve uh, spending that extra twenty five hundred to put cameras inside and outside. Seems no longer. Well I think it goes to tape. So I you know, I don't know all the specifics to tell you. And I need to inform the board um, that Rebecca Sheehan, who is the obviously the town court clerk, is putting some additional hours. Um, the auditors are asking to go back through past year's records and pull out tickets and stuff for a review. So there may be some additional costs. It's not going to affect the budget, but it, it needs to still come underneath the budget. But just so if you see an increase in our hours. And that's what Mike, can I just reiterate one thing? Um, just that, and, and we want as many people as possible to come, certainly, in two weeks. But I just want to make sure that you understand that it's already available. The proposal is available on the town website under ZRC, under the Zoning Review Committee, a couple of clicks away, and I'm sure if you don't want, if you want to read it in print, I'm sure that Sandy can provide it for you. But it's on the website, and it would be wonderful if everyone who came had read it and had a firmer opinion based on what they read. That's all. Thanks. So at this point, we'll open up uh, privileges of the floor. Wait. Oh, I, I was looking for Dora. She's over there. She was sitting here. There she is. <laughs> I looked over she there. I, like, yeah. I thought maybe I had to take a restroom break or something. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> you were just waiting in line. <laughs> um, it was a relatively quiet month, just to uh, let you know I had one uh, complaint from a resident on Skyline Drive about an older resident's dog, who turned out wasn't aware of dog licensing or rabies vaccinations or anything like that. So followed up quite a bit with that one on behalf of the town and the health department. Um, um, do you know if we have received the updated contracts for Montgomery County and APF, yes. I've got my family now. Okay. I haven't heard from them. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I did receive, and Sandra already has them posted out there, uh, the 2015 Rabies Vaccination Clinic Schedule, um, which is sponsored by the County Health Department. It is free of charge for county residents. The first one is coming up on March 7th, which is at the Rodman Senior Center. Dogs, or cats and ferrets are welcome between 10 and 11. They need to be secured in cages. You're going to speak up a little bit. Um, <laughs> and dogs from 11 to 12 and must be secured on a leash. If you have prior um, rabies paperwork, bring that with you. Um, it should be a fun time <clears throat> for everyone who's there. And if you can't make this one in March, the next one after that is in Central Park on June 13th. This information is on the county website as well as our town dog control page on the website. And Sandra has it posted out in the hallway in case you're curious. And um, just one last little factoid. Um, within the last week, it was Saturday morning, I got a call um, from the state police about an abandoned litter of puppies. Um, it wasn't in Princetown, but it was just up the street at the far end of Darrell Road before it turns into before it turns into suits. Um, and someone had found um, three three um, Belgian. Uh, Malinois, 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 um, by themselves, apparently either abandoned, left, I'm not quite sure, but uh, these things do happen. And it just so happened that there were two dogs of similar age found at the, about the same time of day um, in, on Route 7 in Central Bridge. 
about the same age, a little bit sicker. So I don't know what's happening out there, um, why these dogs were abandoned, but um, that's what I was doing on Saturday morning. Yes, what Jim? happened? Well, they are being held right now at the Animal Protective Foundation under the mandatory stray hold, um, which is required by Ag and Markets. Um, at the end of the stray hold, if they are not redeemed by the owner, they will be become property of the APF, and they will either be adopted out directly from them, or they'll reach out to a, a rescue, an appropriate rescue for that type of breed. Um, and I think there has been quite a bit of um, interest mm -hmm. in this breed, mm -hmm. um, which we all thought it was a shepherd mix. It looks like a German shepherd, kind of. Um, but uh, people came out of the woodwork um, through Facebook um, and looking to either support it, either through fostering or adoption um, for these three little pups. They weren't young, young pups. They were about four or five months old, uh, but they were left in alongside Route 20, actually, is where we were found. 20 in my road. So it was very sad. But right now they're they're healthy and in good hands at the APS. Yeah. Good job. <sighs> they're very cute. They're just like. Doug, any for Darla? Joe? Thank you. Thank you, Darla. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Darla. Bob? Thank you. Bob, thank you, Darla. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Sure. I just won't come next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll now open it up to privileges of the floor. No. No? I have something to say first. <laughs> I'm just not going to I'm not on the list. I'm not on the list. All right. I, um, I just wanted to say that there was an issue that the office was not open on Thursday, January 29th. Some residents stopped in to pay their tax bills. I had set hours for Saturday, January 31st, due to that being the last day of the month and that people prefer to pay their bills at the end of the month. I also thought that would capture some residents that do work. Um, the deputy town clerk budget line was set for only $1,300 for this year, so I do need to be mindful of each hour that she is here and working that no one should be alone in the building while they are collecting money and I will take all the suggestions that I did receive into account for next year. That's all. Awesome. Thank you. Is it okay now? I believe so. Fourth time. All right, so I'll open the floor back up for privileges of the floor and this is just general comments uh, about town business. Try to keep it short and concise, but there's no time limit. I'll open it up at 8.08. Michelle Van Wert, I just have a question why the, oh. I just have a question why the website is not up to date. That's all. It's got to be broke. It's not up to date. It hasn't been up to date for a whole month. I have that note. Before, so I'll add to your concern. <laughs> Possible uh, both eighty two through twelve eighty eight Pineburn Road. Uh, I only have one question, uh, Mike, is basically a year and a half ago, I petitioned for you guys for a zone change, and we just keep getting kicked. When's this going to happen? I'm understanding that uh, you guys are thinking about kicking it even farther yet. I... Oh, you're talking about the moratorium? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, what? Yeah, you made me a promise, and my attorney promised was only a couple months after the comprehensive plan was passed. Right. Since all the stuff is going around the town, it's now going to be two years later. That's 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 unacceptable, and you know it is. You guys pass this again. I 
guess we're going to have to bring another attorney. Yeah. 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 Because you know what, this has gone on over a decade. So, <laughs> over a decade. Now so, we're going to work on 12 years. Bob, so what's sure. the answer? So this is why we don't get back to court. I'll give you my answer when it's our when it's privileges of our board, our town board concerns, council concerns. You arrived late, Bob. You missed a good part of the meeting. Sorry, I had business. To, I have no business to run. I understand. And I have a second business to run, but you guys are stopping me from running that business. So there is no more Thank you. Additional comments. Uh, Richard Fortune, 123 Darrow Road. Uh, first of all, I want to remind everyone that uh, Sandy, Sandy Fortune ran for uh, town clerk in 2013, and she lost the the election. Uh, however, at the very end of December the previous town clerk resigned at probably the most important time of the year, preparing the taxes, getting everything together and sending them out. Sandy was thrust into this position with very little uh, help, and she didn't squawk at one thing. And there was help. And they got the taxes out. Great job. You, I gotta wonder why now the her deputies only got a thirteen hundred dollar a year uh, budget when the previous years was eight thousand dollars. About eight thousand. The workload hasn't changed. Hours haven't changed. Nothing's been missed. So why the difference? Why only thirteen hundred dollars now? Doesn't doesn't seem to add up to me. What what did I pay for before? Now we roll into this year's tax season and at a previous board meeting, the question of being open on that last Thursday came up. And it was asked to Sandy, are you gonna be open? She said no. But we're going to be open Tuesday nights and on the 31st to make it accessible for residents. Like she said, Saturday is a much easier time for people that are running businesses and being places. And maybe you know or you don't know, but New York State says that for the tax collector must be open three days consecutive regular business hours. So once again, going above and beyond being here those evenings and on Saturday. No one, nobody said anything about being, why aren't you gonna be here Thursday? None of you. Didn't say a word. Now, on your tax bill, you see the, the bill tells you when the taxes are being collected. It shows you the times, dates. Just because some people don't read that, and then I start getting calls at my home, our home, saying, why aren't you there? Why aren't you there on that Thursday? It doesn't make much sense to me. I don't get it. So some people here want my wife to be here in this building by herself, collecting all this money? Yeah, not gonna happen. It's not right. Our previous, previous judge 
insisted on having two security guards for regular court. And if you remember back when she ran for re or election this past November, one of her campaign slogans was supported by the majority of the town board. So you supported that, but you didn't even know about when the taxes were being collected and you're calling my home. And then I'm being told that I don't have to listen to you. The town board member told me that he didn't have to listen to me and then hung up on me. Hmm. Doesn't seem rather professional. This is a business. You want to call it a town, a hamlet, and everything. This is a business. You have to run it like a business. There are hours. That's why you got your bill. That's when you know. I really thought that this was supposed to be a, a team thing. People kept saying, yeah, well, we're all together. Yeah, not so much, and I don't get it. All she's done is done a great job, worked extremely hard, and produced with less, day in, day out, and giving her grief. I don't get it. None of you people, they don't know her. I don't even know her. And yet, she's getting emails. It's not right. Why didn't any of you volunteer to be here Thursday, be here Tuesday night, be here that Saturday to help do any of that? Couldn't do that. And last, in closing, Sandy accepted this uh, uh, the original appointment and jumped right in and took right off. Did a great job. She she served the town wonderfully. Done a lot. Keeps doing a lot. Uh, she's doing it with professionalism and class. She's running it like a business. We're lucky to have a person like that doing this. It's not politics. She's running a business. We're very lucky. Uh, she does everything within her power to make this a great place and run smooth. I'm very proud of her and I wish we had more people like her working in this town and working for the good of the town. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I just want to, Lisa Crane joins for Road. I just want to say, Mr. Fortune, I think where the confusion was is because it was posted on the website that Town Hall was going to be open. There let, can't me, be let, let me finish. Go ahead. I checked the website myself that Thursday. I came here on my lunch to pay the taxes only because it said that she was going to be here Thursday day. Um, it didn't say anything about Saturday. I knew she was going to be here on Saturday because the previous town board meeting, she had stated that she was going to be here on Saturday. She also stated that she was going to be here on Thursday. No, she didn't. Hold on, because Mr. Gray had brought it up. And she said, yes, I can do that on Thursday. Now, Mr. Bishop, who is in charge of the website, I don't think she would have posted it if that wasn't so. Lisa, and with that, well, hold on. No, no, talk with to that us. being said, not him. Okay. Talk to the with board. that being said, that's why, and I was Me. not the only one here. Thank you. Um, there were two other people that pulled in the parking lot, and it was probably 11:30, quarter to 12 that Thursday. Um, they were also under the same impression because they also checked the website and it did state that town hall would be open from 9 to 4 on Thursday, but not Saturday. It didn't say anything about Saturday on the website. Um, so I think that's where the confusion was. And I just wanted to say that. Thank you. That's all.
a action is definitely to check the website. What's that? This, my action is definitely to check the website. Okay. Well, that's. Before. I think that's where the confusion was. Thank you. Additional comments or privileges or comments. Just one quick time or I do late. I don't get to many of the meetings, like I said, as I said before. Uh, I only see one name sign up here. I don't necessarily know all you guys. Uh, there are a lot of other <laughs> who don't come to these meetings know you guys that well. And the gentleman in, the, in between. I'm a town attorney, unfortunately, I don't have a. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you. That was easy. Really? That's good. All right. Additional comments? Additional comments? Twice. <coughs> We're going to close the comments or privileges of the floor at 8.22. All right, time for business. So it's actually, as Sandy pointed out to me just before we got here, that I should have had an additional minutes approval for the January 6th meeting. So, um, I'm asking for the board to approve the minutes for the January 3rd, 2015 uh, special town board meeting, minutes for the January 13th town board meeting, and then the minutes for the January 6th organizational town board meeting to be approved. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. And Joyce? Yes. Um, this is for um, for the members of the audience, just so we'll keep you informed here. Um, we have to report our retirement payments every year, so this motion is to um, report those hours. Uh, do I have a motion to be resolved with the town of Princetown, location code 30712, hereby establishes the following as a standard work day for elected and appointed officials, and will report the following day reports to the New York State and local employer's retirement system based upon the employer's timekeeping system <coughs> or record of activities. I guess, Sandy, we didn't attach it. Or is Oh, I sent it to you. I thought you were going to. Sorry, I did scan it and send it to you. So, just tables. That's what I'm saying. We want to table it. Is there a timeline on this, Sandy? I think there is, yes. <coughs> Oh, um, yeah, the next meeting will be after that. Can we get the attachment and go back to it? My attachment's there. It's on the computer. Oh, actually. No, I have it here.
Princeton wishes to acknowledge and say thank you to Irma Mastrian for her more than 25 years service as a town historian and, and whereas Irma has formally retired from the position of historian, now therefore be resolved that Robert Jones be appointed historian at an annual salary of $849.99 for a term to expire on 12-31-2015. I think it's three years one. Do you want to vote on them separately or vote on them separately? Okay. I'll make a motion. motion. I'll make the motion. Second. <coughs> Doug. Yes. Uh, Joe. Yes. Lou. Yes. Bob. Yes. Mike. Yes. Zoning Board of Appeals alternate 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 appointment. Be resolved that Dave Sanders be appointed to ZBA as an alternate board member for a term to expire at 12 31 2016. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Doug first, Bob second? Yes. Doug? Yes. Uh, Joe? Yes. Luke? Yes. Bob? Yes. Michael? Yes. Five yes. Zoning Review Committee appointment. Whereas with the resignation of Laura Savage as town planner, and whereas Laura Savage was also on the ZRC ad hoc committee, and with the resignation leaving the position open on the ZRC, therefore be resolved that Pat Mooney be appointed to the ZRC as a committee member. Do I have a motion? I'll make it. I'll second. Uh, Doug? Yes. Uh, Joe? Yes. Lou? Yes. Bob? Yes. Mike is a yes. Board of Assessment uh, Review Appointment. Therefore, be resolved that King D. Gifford be appointed to the Board of Assessment Review for a term to expire on 9 30. Yeah, that, that's a mistake. That's a typo, so I'm reading out the right name. It's 9 30, 2019. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. <laughs> Um, Doug? Yes. Joe? Yes. Lou? Yes. Bob? Yes. Mike's a yes. Planning Board Secretary, where the town board has declared the position of Planning Board Secretary open, and therefore it be resolved the Town Board of Town Prince Barn hereby authorizes the Supervisor Joyce and Town Clerk Fortune to place an advertisement in the Gazette for interested applicants who wish to apply for the position. Um, do I have a motion? I'll make it. <clears throat> so for the for the interested public, um, before we vote. A note from the planning board. Dear town board members, on January twenty second at twenty fifteen, at the regular meeting of the planning board, the subject of an appointment of a secretary to the planning board was discussed. The majority of the board indicated that if Mary Sue was willing to Mary Sue me was willing to serve, they'd be fine with the appointment. Sincerely, Carol McLean, planning board chair. So. The majority of the <coughs> board has decided not to follow that recommendation and declare the position open. So that's the resolution in front of us.
So, do I have a motion? Joe Payne. Oh, okay. yes. Sorry. No second. Doug? Yes. Joe? Yes. Lou? Yes. Bob? Yes. Mike's yes. Sandy will draw up a advertisement. Okay. Hazard Mitigation Committee. <clears throat> I'm actually pretty excited about this committee, so and I'll talk about it down to council concern. So. Uh, whereas the town board of the town of Princeton has appointed Michael Coolen as chairperson, chairperson of the Hazard Mitigation Committee, whose purpose is to work along and integrate its hazard mitigation procedures with the procedures of the Schenectady County Hazard Committee under Jim Colon. Therefore, it be resolved that the town board of the town of Prince, Princeton hereby appoints the following to the Hazard Princeton Hazard Mitigation Ad Hoc Committee. Michael Coolen is chair, Carl Barda, representing PIAC, Gene Bursu. John Tobiason representing the fire departments, Loretta Coolen, and at least actually one position open. Do I have a motion? Is that good to have uh, two from one family on the same board? It's an ad hoc. So, right. okay. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Doug? Yes. Um, Joe? Yes. Lou? Yes. Bob? Yes. Mike's a yes. Um, we'll get into the water fund claims. This is the financial spokes and for. Oh, we can do it this week. I don't know if it's time to do it. Again, just for the residents, you know, to keep you informed about where you're spending your money. On the back is our the voucher claims. So this is where you know the water funds, the highway fund, and the general fund. Um, you can see the amounts and who are and who are paying. If you need additional, uh, um, if you need additional information, obviously we can you know break it down even further for you. So that's the business we got to do right now. So we're going to talk about the water fund, which is the water districts. Board of Foreign Claims 2014, uh, Abstract 14. So what's the saying um, for the folks in the audience is we're wrapping up our expenditures for 2014 by the end of the month here, the 28th, I think is the date, the actual date, or the 20th, I don't remember. We gotta file our, we gotta close the books and file our, uh, our budget, our closed budget to New York State um, as part of the normal process so um, what we're doing here is reviewing the final vouchers and bills for 2014 um, hopefully it'll be approved and from there we'll write our checks to whoever we owe money to and then um, we'll close the books on 2014 so we're going to pay bills we may have some transfers to balance a line or two um, <coughs> Just as a quick note, I don't have the final figures, but we should be, again, increasing our general fund uh, fund balance for a uh, third or fourth year in a row. So, so good news there. All right, order fund claims is abstract two four, or number 14. It's hereby resolved that the town board approves claims 150 to 152 in the amount of $261.90. Do I have a motion? I'll second. I'll second. Uh, Lou? Yes. Doug? Yes. Joe? Yes. Bob? Yes. And Joyce is yes. Water Fund Claims 2015, abstract number two. So just again to keep the public informed, we are now paying 2015 bills. So, you know, anything that service that started on January 1st through now, you know, NIMO, National Grid, et cetera, NIMO. Um, we're starting to pay our 2015 bills. Uh, Water Fund Claims 2015, abstract number two. It's hereby resolved that the town board approves claims three to 10 in the amount of $8,518.33. Do I have a motion? I'll make it. Second. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Sorry, Mr. Bob. And <coughs> Joyce? Yes. 
water fund transfers uh, again for the community um, the controller comptroller um, really likes to see the lines balanced um, although you're going to see some terms in here under budgeted and you know we try to be informative as possible to tell you why we're making some transfers um, the again the key message is we still the town still came under its general fund and work fund budgets. We didn't exceed our budgets. Uh, again, though, there's some individual, uh, individual lines may have exceeded. Uh, work fund transfers. So it is hereby resolved the town board approves the following transfers. $651.30 from the contingency fund to the water assistance fund, uh, number 83111, for repairs. $461 from the water audit fund to the service contracts fund line. Uh, it's an addition to the contract. $2,976.71 from the contingency fund, the water contingency fund, uh, to the water utilities fund, again under budget. $362.37 from the contingency fund to the water purification fund, uh, again under budgeted. And $48.54 from the contingency fund to the health insurance fund, reasons for a re raise in the premium. Do we have a motion? I'll make it. Second. Second. Uh, um, Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. And Joyce? Yes. General funds clamps, uh, claims. General Fund Claims 2014, Abstract 14. Again, this will be the last abstract for the year, 2014. Uh, it's hereby resolved that the Town Board approves claims 364 to claims 366 in the amount of $372.24. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. General Fund Claims 2015, Abstract Number 2. It is hereby resolved that the Town Board approves claims 11 <coughs> and 30 to claim 30 in the amount of $16,816.26. Oh, sorry, let me repeat that again. It is hereby resolved that the Town Board approves claims 11 to claim 30 in the amount of $16,817.26. Do I have a motion? I'll make it. Second. I got a question about this. All these court costs in here, does that come under the general funds? Well, courts fall under general fund. I mean, they have their own section of the budget, and then there's their service line contracts, equipment. That comes out of their line, this stuff. Yes, sir. What is this one over here? Use this petty cash for court directed by court orders, two hundred dollars. So what the Office of Court Administration said is that, you know, because they either take money orders or cash and they need some petty cash. So what's gonna happen there is we're gonna issue them two hundred dollars to to uh, to the court to keep us petty cash and at the end of the year he's gonna write us a check back. So we'll balance our checkbook, he'll balance his checkbook, we'll close the checkbooks. Okay. Good question, though. Um, so I had Joe as first, Joe as second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. And Mike is a yes. General fund transfer is 2014. Again, we're balancing the budgets as in individual lines. Um, That's a lot to read. Um, from the contingency line, $859 to justice supplies for laws, law books, and postage. Uh, from line 13 and 402, bookkeeper contractual, $452 to line 13 404, bookkeeper supplies for stipends. 14 124 town clerk contractual, uh, amount of $31.20, $31.21 to town clerk equipment line. Uh, error in the postings. 
Um, town clerk contractual, $70.23 to the town clerk supply line of 14104 postage uh, budgeted. From the contingency fund, $1,500 for to the attorney for the planning board, line 14204. From the contingency fund, $237.50 for the web administration, solar panel TV. Uh, town Hall Energy, $357.18 to the Town Hall Contractual, snowplow under budgeted. Town Hall Energy, $564.03 to Town Hall Telephone under budgeted. Central Print, $192 to Central Print Professional Services, mail under budgeted. Um, capital improvements to the State Police for $738. Um, the State Police Contractual Snowplow under budgeted. Capital improvement to the State Police for 2,160 cents um, to the State Police Repair Line for additional electrical work. From the Contingency Fund, $63.17 to the Youth Contractual uh, Line under budgeted. From the Contingency Fund, uh, $905.29 to the Board of Appeal Stipends under budgeted. Um, from the contingency line, $3,249.98 to the planning board attorney fees under budgeted. From the contingency line, $50 to the PIAC professional service line under budgeted. So again, let me just, before I ask the board for a vote. When I first came into office, it was very important to me that we set the budget lines as close as possible because I thought it was more important that we try to um, watch our lines as closely as possible and not set the budget so extraordinary that you'll never come underneath them or you never go over them, but you don't really learn anything from it. Um, so, you know, when I worked with the board over the last three years, we've tried to set the lines as closely as possible, um, but this is, you know, actually good lessons learned because now we can go back and look and say, you know, why did this line go over? And what did we learn from it? You know, was it increase in mail stamps, you know, from 47 cents to 49 cents, or whatever the issue was. So, uh, again, I want to highlight to the town that the expected, although not final, uh, 2014 budget, we expect uh, we're going to come under budget and increase our fund balance by, again, I think somewhere between 20 and 25,000. So, you know, uh, I think so I want to thank the board for, you know, for keeping their, uh, their eyes dotted and their T's crossed here. So, do I have a motion? I'll make it. You want a second? No second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mike is a yes. Um, same thing with highway folks. There's really a, technically we don't necessarily have a highway department, but we do. Um, kind of falls under the highway under our general fund, but there are um, certain rules that follow to um, fund the uh, fund that department. So highway claims for November 2014, abstract uh, 14. Hereby resolve the town board approved claims number seven in the amount of $9,954.83. $9,954.83 for 2014 snow ice repairs, maintenance road repairs. For the board, that is really the fourth quarter of 2014. You know, we had a couple of snowstorms um, early, in, well, late in the year there, I guess, November, December. So that's what the, uh, the fourth quarter bill from County Highway. Do I have a motion? I'll make it. Thank you, Doug. Second. Second. Thank you, Bob. Mr. Uh, Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. And Mike is a yes. Highway transfers for 2014, abstract 14. The town board approves the transfer of $9,954.83 from the account number 99019 to the account number 5031 for the said 2014 snow ice repairs uh, and maintenance repairs. Again, we're just doing a transfer to another, to another line here. We're going to spend that one and transfer it to another. 
Um, Mr. Doug. Yes. Oh, sorry, motion. I'll make it. <laughs> Thank you. Second. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Mr. Lou. Yes. Mr. Doug. Yes. Mr. Joe. Yes. Mr. Bob. <coughs> and Mike's a yes. Uh, again, for the town residents, every year we're required by law to do an audit on each department that carries a checkbook. So we're in there to audit the checkbooks and make sure that, you know, in essence, they zero balance. Um, you brought in a thousand, you spent a thousand, your checkbook should be zero. Um, so we ordered the books, um, and at the time, a couple of the departments had issued checks and they hadn't cashed, so they hadn't done this full transfer. Uh, or execute the full process. So what we do at the time is we look at the books, we understand that there's a couple of, book, a couple of checks that are outstanding and that's listed under exceptions, um, but otherwise the books report to zero or, or zero balance. So what we're saying here is there's a 114 during that audit, we ordered these funds and either they had a check as an exception or there was none and it balanced. So, um, two notes, I want to note, so we haven't been able to audit the 2013 court clerk books, uh, and they will not be approved on this matter. It's been turned over to OCDA for review. Um, number two note is the code enforcement. That note hadn't checked, I, had, uh, I didn't have the check number, um, but I had a note from Nick saying that check was to supervise or close out the year. That was the amount of $6,950. And then number three, as you know, we went through Judge Reynolds, and then while, while he was out, then Rotterdam's judges, Judge Litz and McLaughlin, I know I spoke, said that one too. McLaughlin, thank you, Bob. Um, every time a judge comes into office, he gets his own checking account, his own bank account. Um, so even though you're coming in temporarily, they had to issue checks. Right now, those three, Judges checkbooks are also under review by the office. It's actually OCA. So they're not listed here. So obviously the town board could not audit them. So um, do I have a motion? It's hereby resolved that the town board of town of Princeton hereby approves the results of the 2014 order report with the following exceptions. Uh, as noted below. Oh, 15, sorry. I'm going to update that. Do I have a motion? So second. I'll second. Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. And Joyce said yes. Resolution for a public information meeting. Whereas the Zoning Review Committee has completed its final draft of the proposed Hamlet District for the purposes of meeting the top priority of a recently adopted revised comprehensive plan. And whereas the Zoning Review Committee has received input from a local land developer, a local land use attorney, a certified planner, and a Princetown Planning Board, and its attorney in the development of the said Hamlet proposed, Hamlet District proposed amendment to the Princetown zoning laws and whereas the chair of the ZRC, Paul Golden, is prepared to formally present the proposed Hamlet district addition to the Princetown zoning law in a public information meeting, and whereas to inform the greatest number of residents with the public awareness of the proposed zoning amendment, hereby request the town's videographer, Ben Moore, be present to record the presentation and place a copy upon the town's website and also at open stage media for presentation on a Time more Public Access Channel. Now therefore be resolved that a public information meeting will be held by the town board of the town of Princeton with respect to the proposed Hamlet District for the purposes of receiving feedback, answering questions, such public hearing to be held on the 24th day of February 2015 at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as practical at the Princeton Town Hall, 165 Princeton Plaza, New York. Do I have a motion? I'll make it. Second? Second. Uh, Mr. Lou. Well, I still think that we could do this all at one public meeting, but uh, it seems like the consensus of the board is to have two meetings, so I guess we'll, I'll vote yes on it. 
Thank you. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. And Joyce? Yes. Uh, this next one, folks, as you know, we went into a contract with the general code to codify our laws. Um, the project <coughs> is complete. Um, so we're into our final stages of putting this out. So this resolution calling for a public hearing and proposed local law to provide for the codification of the local laws, ordinances, and certain resolutions to the town of Princetown and into the municipal code to be designated the code of the town of Princetown. Whereas the town of Princeton has entered into a project with general code at a cost of $15,000 for the codification of local laws, ordinances, and certain resolutions of, town, of the town of Princeton for the purposes of increasing the effectiveness of town government administration, providing for greater public awareness of and access to town legislation, and protecting the health, safety, and welfare of the town inhabitants. And Whereas the proposed codification has been published in a loosely form and the town board now desires to formally effect the, adopt, the adoption of said codification by enactment of local law, now therefore be resolved that a public hearing shall be held by the town board of the town of Princetown with respect to the following local law, uh, such public hearing to be held on the 10th day of March 2015 at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as practical at the Princetown Town Hall, 165 Princetown Plaza, New York. The proposed law shall be considered as follows. Local law, probably number two, but the local law to provide for a certain codification of local laws, ordinances, and certain resolutions of the town of Princetown into the municipal code to be designated as the code of the town of Princetown. Copies of the text Copies of the text of the above named local law shall be filed in the office of the town clerk, and therefore, and be it resolved there, geez, be it further resolved that the town clerk is hereby directed and authorized to cause public notice of said hearing to be given in accordance with home municipal rule law, the open meetings law, and the town law of the state of New York. Ooh. How come we've worked on something like this that isn't done, Mike? What do you mean it's not done? Well, I still don't understand how it can be completed when the vote was two to two and it was sent in that way. You can't send in a tied vote and have it one way or the other. Well, it wasn't a tied vote. The measurement failed to update those three chapters. So the chapters didn't get updated. Well, yeah, but that's something that we've still been wanting to do. You can, do it. Those chapters. you can do it. As a matter of fact, that's what Paul Bowling's going to be doing is updating one of his chapters, a section of one of the chapters. But we had a contract over three years. The contract said, you've got it. This is the, the stages of the contract. This is the project plan. There are stages, steps, boom, 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 one after another. We followed them all. We passed them all. We paid the bill. The bill was paid. We paid fifteen thousand dollars. The work is done. <clears throat> I know the concerns about the three zoning laws, but we can do them anytime. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Yeah, you have to do each law separately. Correct. As opposed to doing them all at once, you might do the C code. Um, that's, yeah, we could have included them. You know, again, we brought them to the board's attention. Um, for the record, you and Doug voted no. Joe and I voted yes. The, the, that resolution, or those resolutions to update those zoning laws per suggestion by the ZRC Planning Board, ZBA, our planning um, consultant, and as recommended by general code, you said no. You didn't want to read them. So that resolution to update those chapters said we are not going to update those chapters. Leave them as they are. No, we didn't say that. A two to two vote is it? It's not a pass. I didn't say it was a pass. I said the resolution died. That's what I said. The resolution died. 
you can spin it any way you want. We yes. didn't pass it. I, I didn't say we passed it, Lou. I said we didn't pass and it. We didn't review those last three chapters. You said you didn't want to. We had to keep well, going. So, when did we say we didn't want to review them? We've been pushing to have that done all under this first envelope yeah. for months now. And we, we stopped before we got to those three chapters, and that was it. No. So I don't know where that's all coming from. Go back and look at the, the minutes, the public record, Bob. You know, we had a contract to follow. I've been pleading with you guys to keep moving this along because we had a contract. You had to follow the timeline. And we were all for making the changes to those three chapters, and we never got to them. We took a vote. Mm. We took a vote. Yeah, well, I happened to be at a funeral when you took the vote, so I didn't get my vote. But we can still do it. And it's going to cost us that much more. How much more? Well, we got to do every law separately. You know how you know what this says? If you do it all at once, on a public hearing, when you're changing them all at once, this is the time to do it. Not changing every law one at a time. So that was the idea of this e-code, which I was never in favor of, and I didn't vote for it. You voted present. I voted present. No. I did not vote for it. Right, but the board did vote for it, and the town has paid. The work is done with the exception of those three chapters. And we also asked general codes to come back in and explain that it's probably beneficial and provide better value to the town if we just move on and leave those three. The cost to update them is minimal. Bob, you and Doug updated that zoning law Chapter 200, seven times in 2006. Seven times. So you don't have to do the whole book. You don't have to do the whole law. You can just do sections. Little by little, you can do this. But the work for general code is done. It's done. It's, there's nothing left to do. It's, the work is done. But we weren't ready for it to be sent in, and it got sent in anyway, so. But we had a contract to follow. Yeah, well. We All I'm asking follow. for is a public hearing or, you know, we don't have to vote on it. I mean, you, you know, there's, Joe's got the book, he's got a presentation. Um, All I'm asking for is a public hearing. And I'll get copies of the book for each of them. <clears throat> we already got the copies. No. You have working copies that we paid for during the exercise. We went out and came down on Saturday and we printed them out one by one. And we went as far as to print old, new, we printed out the chapters as suggested by E-Code or General Code. E-Code's the product, General Code's the company. <coughs> I mean, we followed this to the letter. We, meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, we had a contract, we had a schedule to keep, and you know, we did 27 of 30. I mean, that's pretty good work here, guys. I mean, that's some good stuff. Most important chapters we didn't do. But we can do them starting tomorrow. We can do them anytime. Matter of fact, that's again what Paul's presenting is a piece of that chapter to align with the zone uh, comprehensive plan. So why don't we get those changes taken care of before we have a public hearing so the people can see what they're actually looking at? They're going to see it anyway, Bob. No, they're going to see it. Why don't they see what we want them to make changes to? The three chapters, there's a lot of things in there that need to be changed, and that's what the people want to see. They don't want to just see something that's not been changed, and then three months down the road, we make changes. Bob, I guess I'm confused. This is I'm confused, too. We should have done this months ago, and we stopped at those three chapters, and you guys didn't want to finish it. That's not true, Bob. Well, we That's absolutely not to... true, so don't say that, because I sat and read them chapter by chapter, word, by and we word. stopped at those last three chapters, Mike. Bob, we had a contract. There was a schedule. Okay. You voted on it. All right. Go you ahead. saw it. 
If you don't want a public hearing, it, just say so. I don't care about a public hearing, but I'm not happy with not finishing those last three chapters. Whenever you want to start, Bob, go ahead and jump in. I've said it for months. I know you what you said, Bob. What have you done? Yeah. It's a board action. <laughs> it's not just me. It's a board action. We've got to make changes. And we have an information meeting next week to start the chapter, the big chapter, 200. You can't have a public hearing on this when we didn't do these three chapters. Thank you. Actually, we can. Thank you. The project is done, Lou. The project is done. It's well, not done because not we done didn't go through those last done. three chapters. How can it be done? Were you here when the when the general code came in? Yeah, I was here, and, and I said we were going to do the last three chapters. And again, what about the contract and timeline? We never pursued it after that. Thank you. If the answer is no, the answer is no. Well, I don't, don't think we should have a public hearing until the three chapters are done. So that's going to take, what, three years? It didn't take us three years to do the 27 chapters we did. That's because they're very, very, very small. Okay. Well, and I'd like to bring up the fact that when you make changes to zoning laws, you've got to worry about seeker, environmental factor, all of that stuff. That's, gonna, that's what Mike is saying is absolutely right. It's going to take a long Time to I make these revisions. I and let's be, if we submit them, we're still going to pay. The work is done. We had a contract. The work is done. Even if we do them, we're going to have to pay. We're going to have to pay. So it's going to cost you five, six thousand a year to keep it up, you said. No, I did not say that, Doug. <clears throat> I did not, at any time, did those words come from my mouth. Not once. This, I can't, uh, is so good for the town. You think it's good for the town. I don't think it was good for the town. I thought it was a waste of money to begin with, $15,000 for this, for a town of 2,000 people. Who uses that? How many, how many houses were built in this last year? If I may, this town? I was just elected to the zoning board. My name is Patrick Mooney. I was elected to the zoning board in January, correct, Lou? Yes. I voted me in. I would like to be able to sit in my office or my couch at home, bring up this code, and be able to research all the current laws, current laws, not 20 years, 5 years, or 10 years of books that you guys all have, that, or I have to come down here and look through them to find out which law is current, and then give my own interpretation on a project. That's what this is. It's going to make all those laws... In my opinion... And that's my opinion. This Correct. was a waste of money. No. It was a waste of fifteen thousand dollars so the time. Every other town in the state. And every other town, go to Rotterdam and see. I went down and talked to them. Everybody goes to the book. Hardly anybody uses that down there. I went down there and asked them. So the, go up and ask them and go in and see what they do. Twenty thousand hits on the web aren't to that code for Rotterdam. And we got and we built how many houses last year? Three. So you asked for a point, and he's giving you some facts. It, it, it's up Please for to facts. businesses to be able to research it without having to come to the town. If you have an attorney that wants to research a law for a potential client to come into the town, he should be able to do that without having to come to the town and actually come when it's open. <coughs> We're going to restricted our hours here for open. Rotterdam in 2014 had 20, over 20,000 hits to their website. That's 20,000 customers coming to their website to research laws. And that's just Rotterdam? That's just Rotterdam. And how many do you think you're going to get in Princeton when we built three houses last year? More than you think. More than it's, it's going to go, it's, just, it's not just for homes, it's for fencing heights. People want, somebody wants to put a fence up. It, it gives you all the height restrictions for fencing. It gives you your setbacks for where fences have to go. All that stuff. Somebody wants to research putting the addition on. It gives all those housing setbacks so that they know, do I have to go for a variance or anything like that? It's all there. Is this meeting open? Can we speak? No, it's not. Oh. I was just saying that I was just a point to more. Go ahead. I, I'm not certain people be able to So it's, do I have a motion? I'll make it. Do I have a second? I'll make the second. Lou? No. No open meeting. No, I'm not approving this. This is just for an open hearing.
Doug? No. Can I ask why? Because we didn't go through the other chapters. You just talked about it. I don't have to repeat. Joe? Yes. Bob? No. And I'm not opposed to it being on the computer, but I am opposed to having misinformation up there. What misinformation possibly could be up there, Bob? Well, we have not gone through those last three chapters yet. And, and there will be, be changes. Right. And that's, exactly and that's what people like this gentleman should be concerned with, getting the right and proper information. So putting the current law up there as it stands right now today is misinformation? No. That's what's going up. That's what we're doing. We the haven't made the changes there. yet. My answer is no. <laughs> So, okay. Councilman Concerns, Doug. I wanted to know why the thing hasn't been on television for the last month, which I said before, so that's immaterial. Mm -hmm. that it? And the website. What about the website? Wally. You just heard what they said on there that it hasn't been updated, so. Yep, I got that action. Anything else? No. Joe? I'd like to say to thank the public that came tonight for the really good public hearing on extending the moratorium. i also like to underscore everything that Rich Fortune said about the work of Sandy Fortune, our town clerk. She has been a diamond in the rough, and um, working with her has been a real pleasure. Um, and then thirdly, my concerns about my fellow councilmen wanting to change site plan review law, the subdivision, law and the zoning law is an exercise similar just to shooting from the hip. I don't know why they are so adamant about making these changes now when it's perfectly within our power to change any law anytime by a given process established by the United States. So <clears throat> what we have, if we just go ahead and well, the public hearing for this is, is just shut, got shut down. But <coughs> the law, the code would contain the laws that are on the books. These gentlemen want to change them, but why? You know, let's do not three of them all at once, in addition to 27 other ones. Let's just move forward one step at a time. And that's all I have. Thank you. Lou? Uh, yes, uh, it's come to my attention that, uh, well, first the state police barracks over there, the gutter fell down, it's a minor thing, took care of it. But anyway, uh, it's come to my attention that there's going to be an opening on the uh, Metroplex board. And I understand that the uh, person that's resigning represented both Dwaynesburg and Princetown. So I, it's my understanding that one person is going to be appointed from Dwaynesburg and Princetown to serve on that committee. And it has to be, can't be an elected official. Uh, I'd like to know how we are going to go about selecting somebody if it's a joint thing with Dwaynesburg. And maybe Mike can answer that question in our turn. Uh, I'd have to check Metroplex uh, bylaws to see whether they, you know, call for a weighted vote. Is maybe a problem if that's their method. 
I don't know who's serving on it, but I understand that he's going to resign. It's not a paid position to serve on the Metroplex board. It's a voluntary. Uh, right. Yeah. And and in the other towns, each town in the city of Schenectady have their individual yes. representatives. But in in Princeton and in, in Dwaynesburg. <coughs> Check the Metroplex bylaws to see if they specify how that would You know, because it could quite reasonably be that Dwaynesburg wants one person and we'd like to have somebody else. And uh, if it comes down to, you know, weighted vote based on population, uh, then we've got a problem. <coughs> The other thing I'd like to, I'm sure that most people don't know, but I serve on a committee uh, for the last two years that is uh, setting up a, uh, a freight corridor, freight movement throughout, the, since I'm on the board of directors for a national organization, and I was asked to serve on this. Which organization? It's uh, OOIDA, Owner Operators, Robin, Missouri. So uh, this is a four county, thing that I'm serving on, that we're doing a uh, uh, roads, bridges, uh, how to move freight more efficiently. It's also through the ports. Uh, we meet quarterly, and now it's going to be, this is going to be a template for a statewide freight movement, and I'm going to be serving on a statewide. I have uh, had this intersection designated as a bottleneck, and Last year, year and a half ago, uh, the state was going to fund $80,000 for a study to do uh, redesigning this intersection. Uh, they asked if uh, our town could put up $10,000, if Rotterdam could put up $10,000. I didn't think Rotterdam would be willing to do that. And I asked, and I didn't think that our board would want to spend ten thousand dollars for it, but they wanted to do that. They even came back and asked me again if I could solicit money from Golubs or uh, or uh, Price for uh, Galisi, and uh, they didn't. Uh, I didn't think that they would want to respond to it either, since they don't particularly care about it. But I think we lost the opportunity to uh, to uh, change this intersection. To make it more uh, palatable for Princetown yeah, residents. The intersection where I-88 and the truck stop. They wanted to do a study to redesign that intersection because they know there's a problem there. And it's now designated as a bottleneck along with exit 24. So they are going to be looking at this to. Uh, exit 24? Exit 24 is considered a bottleneck and along in Albany, along with uh, the twin bridges and. Uh, the Albany Airport, they're going to redesign that to uh, that's already in the works. But I think we lost the opportunity to be at the table with them. But hopefully, uh, if we keep pushing for this, maybe uh, something good will come out of it and the state <coughs> will be looking at re redesigning this. It's only going to be a question of time before this whole corridor is developed over here, and everybody knows it. They're bringing sewers up to Burdick Street now, all the way up to, to Route 7. It's only going to be a question of time before they come under the throughway and over in front of Shalmont, and that 47 acres gets developed. We might as well face that fact right now that that's going to happen. So, and this intersection is going to get worse as that happens. If the state is willing to redesign that, and that comes under federal money because it, it, it involves uh, the interstate highway system, and the Highway Trust Fund to uh, designate money for it, uh, and the state is willing to do this, uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, we can get this approved again so they can do a study to redesign this, and I had a lot of ideas how they could do it. The whole intersection was designed wrong to begin with, uh, and the reason being is because of the way that the trucks enter and exit uh, the pilot and where they get fuel and they have to pull back out around and the reason they did that was because they didn't want to tie up the intersection with the, the yield way there but uh, that's the problem with the intersection and that's the problem with this corridor over here uh, i'm not opposed to uh, development on route seven i'm only opposed to it being that the traffic 
would not be suitable for the residents of Princetown. If something could be done with that, I would certainly not, uh, since this is a uh, corridor for, uh, in, for commercial development on Route 7, I would not be opposed to it. But I'm opposed to it when the state is uh, not going to do anything with the intersection. And hopefully they're going, going to now because it's designated as a bottleneck. And it's only going to continue to get worse. Hopefully, uh, we can uh, get this uh, project moved along, and they'll do a study on redesigning it. And that's what I'm going to be working on. So that's all I've got to say about that. And I don't know if anybody knew about it. I know you knew about it, Mike, because I mentioned it to you last year, but I never presented to the town board because the interest I didn't think was there was there at the time. But uh, as this goes forward, I think that uh, that something has definitely got to be done with this intersection. And like I said, it's only going to get worse whether we do anything over here or not. That development on the other side is definitely going to take place as soon as those sewer, they didn't build those apartment houses over there to put septic systems in. I can assure you of that. Am I right, Doug? That's, <laughs> that's already been approved that those sewer lines are coming up. It's only a question of time before they, they end up over here, right on our doors. They started last year. They did. They were supposed to start. That's right. Last year. Yeah. And they didn't. So. So, so what do you think? Should, should we approve some money to see? No, it's too, no, it's too late now. The, uh, the well, you said you were going to see. I'm going to see if again. I'm pushing for it, and I'm, I'm, uh, I've already talked to different legislators about it over there, and they've suggested doing something about. Uh, trying to fund money for it, and uh, <coughs> hopefully, if they they come back and say that they're they're going to push for it, maybe something could be done with this. The whole intersection is a mess there, just because of the way the trucks enter there. It, 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 like I said, the whole thing was designed wrong. Rotted in when they when they approved the truck stop should not have approved it the way they did, but they did. Nobody will disagree. With them, no. But I just thought I'd bring that up because uh, nobody knows that I've been serving on this board for the last few years, and it was an appointment that I was happy to get on since I've been involved with uh, uh, trucking for the last 46 years. So. That's all I've got. Bob? No, I've said enough. Okay. Okay. I've said enough, thank you. Are they coming out with a new town, town uh, letter? When's that next letter coming out? Um, I think I asked for feedback from all the departments at the end of the month. So by 28th, whatever that Friday is. So when they get it all written up, we're going to be able to look at it before it goes out, or they're just going to set it up? Do you want to edit it? I think the town board should. Sure. <coughs> Anything else? That's it for me. All right. So I want to start off one thing. So I had a call from a resident over the weekend. They received a letter in the mail. <coughs> Um, so it had some disparaging remarks about one member of their family. Um, so as if I had knowledge about it, I don't. It's not my style. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm especially sensitive to this person's concern because I've had, again, my family and my professional life and private life interrupted by disgruntled residents, I'll say. So to this person, um, when we see this letter, um, I support you. Um, I think everybody has a right to express opinions, but to drag, I mean, drag's probably not the, the word I'm looking for, but to bring in and make a reference to, or even just to bring in, you know, family members into the discussion, um, defenseless family members is just out of control and I don't support it at all. Um, 
you know, it's one thing if you stand up and you make your statement and then, you know, I you guess you can expect to have people disagree with you. Hopefully they do it courteously, uh, with courtesy and professionalism. But the response should be just to the person and maybe on the subject. It shouldn't be, certainly not dragging family members into the conversation. It has just been called for. Um, again, I can feel some of the pain because it's happened. Um, and again, after a while, I kind of got used to it. I think we could be attacked to some to this degree, but um, you know, as a public official, we should expect you know certain feedback. But this person's letter that I saw, um, it was uh, definitely out of hand, out of control, um, and you know not necessary. You know, if there's again, if there's conflicts or, or opinion on, you know, what the resident may or may not have said, or what's a fact or what's not a fact, that's one thing. Um, but to to go after, you know, uh, defenseless family members is uh, not called for. So, um, <coughs> so to that resident, you know, again, um, however I can help, you know, please let me know. I'll do what I can do. Um, so as far as business goes, um, the moratorium, I think we should support it. You know, the process was the ZRC to finish the process, establish the, the, the district, or at least allow the public to hear about it. Um, um, as Lou noted with this intersection here, I mean this intersection, they got 400 units going over here, this intersection is going to be a zoo. Um, I mean, you'll never be able to get the price chopper. Um, Shalmont, the superintendent's come in and said that they, you know, she's against it, you know. So, um, you know, it's the taxes, there's not going to be any, any benefit to any taxes. You know, 90% of it's in Rotterdam and it's 13 years there's just, I don't see any benefit or value to the town, you know. Doug, the videos, I talked with the resident a couple of times. Actually, she's been kind of reporting to me about the video. So I, I talked to Open Stage. I don't know what the issue is. Um, they keep looking in there and say the, the CD's in there. And then I call the resident and I say, can you watch this? hour and she called back said it's not on there called back down there so all we can see think is maybe they got the dvd just pushed in wrong and said rotterdam or something i, I don't know but you know i'm going to follow up with it when ben submits this uh tonight's meeting and and follow closely uh, i also have numerous actions from numerous members of the uh, uh of the town on the town board meetings or not sorry scratch that on the town website so I need to follow up on that typically I don't follow the website um, I have to monitor the website apparently I do um, hazard mitigation so we met with the county um, their hazard mit mitigation prime Jim Colon um, it was a great meeting I think this committee is going to do some really good stuff because I want to expand it to integrate the county's alert systems and fire department's alert systems and their hazard mitigation processes to a town type prince town um, information system you know i'm kind of thinking making like the town hall and maybe plotter kill or maybe and maybe pine grove as as temporary shelters if we lose power or we lose heat or you know we can bring people in you know maybe we can get a grant on a generator we can put the the, uh, the buildings on generators and you know just temporary shelters um, you know maybe alert system so when we have storms or tornadoes you can send out an alert or emails I mean I think there's a lot of things we can get done with this committee so I think it's gonna be a really good committee um, I really have good expectations out of it uh, we met with the Red Cross the Red Cross came in and, and presented um, I'd like to ask maybe Joe or somebody to coordinate another event with the Red Cross. It was a very good presentation, you know, how to prepare your home, how to, you know, uh, 
things to prepare for, you know, uh, evacuation packages, you know, in case you're, you know, the tornado or a storm or something. So it's a really good presentation. Um, so I'd like to be able to offer that to the town and actually to the hourglass or seniors and to maybe any other uh, groups. It was a really good presentation. So um, that was a really good meeting. Records management policy. So that is in its final draft. <clears throat> Again, this is critical to the management of the as much as we don't like it, government is around paperwork and laws, and it's just, it is what it is. <coughs> to protect an individual or protect a group, you need to have laws. And in this case, the records management policy dictates how the town keeps its records. You know, what's old, what's new, what's good, what's bad, and the process um, to follow that. So it needed to be updated, so we're pretty close on that. E code. I'm flabbergasted, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm flabbergasted, but holy cow. Uh, we talked about the grant uh, from the courts. So that's pretty good news. Uh, I tried to work with Lou. I know, Lou, that was on your things to do list um, with security or video security. I think it was anyway. Um, State police. I know, Lou, you talked about the contract coming up. Um, so I actually think we can meet all the requirements. Um, as a matter of fact, I asked Pat Mooney because he's a, uh, a contractor to use some pricing on all those open items. And we've got another gentleman um, who does like internal rehabs or something. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so I'm going to suggest we set up a meeting with the state police, go down there and talk about it because I think we can give them everything they want. Um, we just have to build it into the contract. and. We should be good. So I'll set up a meeting. Uh, obviously, we'll invite you, uh, Mike, um, Pat, and any other gentleman. So that should be good. Um, I want to highlight again Sandy Fortune. Um, as Richard said, you know, she's thrown in. You know, two days before our busiest season. You know, I quit. Um, so Sandy jumped in at the last minute, sure I'll help out, and you know, got this office back up on its legs and running smooth as silk. Um, you know, from, a, from a, a cold start, you know, no transition, no training, no classes, from a cold dead start. And it's up and it's running and it's running extremely good. Um, so that just says a lot. I mean, just that statement just says a lot. Um, you know, within months, you know, it was up and running. We went through our busiest season, um, collected, you know, unknown amounts of cash. And again, we did it again this year. Um, so, I mean, just again, huge, huge uh, thanks to Sandy. I mean, professional, great job. I uh, can't say enough. Um, um, so thank you, Sandy, in case I didn't say that. Um, and again, to the residents who did show up for you know, Paul Golding's um, presentation, my mistake, I was hurrying. You know, I was just doing emails. Again, my apologies. You know, I really do hope you'll come to the informational meeting session because I think it's gonna be really good. It's gonna be really good. A, to understand where are these people, and I'm saying these people, could really start with the first comprehensive committee, then seven years, then the second comprehensive plan, you know, that committee, um, and it's moved into the ZRC where they continue to refine and define this Hamlet. Um, so, as the person has said earlier, I mean, they've taken a lot, a lot, a lot of time, and hopefully they've considered everybody's interests. You know, then all we're asking is just to come in and listen and share professionally, especially if you have a difference of opinion, professionally share your concerns, you know, share your ideas, like, you know, what about this? Can you add that in there? Can you add this? Can you take that out? They're all open to suggestions. So I'm really, again, I apologize for the misinformation or the misdate. And we I really encourage you to come in and participate you know, in this information session, because I think it's going to be really good. With that, I have, I'm done. Doug, anything for me? 
No. Joe? No, Mike. Blue? No. Bob? Also. Thank you. All right. With that, I'll do, uh, I guess technically, typically we do uh, the second round of uh, approvals of the floor. Yeah, I'm just going to have a couple of words. I know everybody's been here a long time. Um, just Michelle being worse, got through drove. Um, I understand that it is, it was difficult for Sandy to come in and take over. She did get some training from the prior town clerk about three days. However, the reference to the reduced budget for the deputy clerk did not occur in the year that Sandy took office. It did occur the year before. It reduced the budget of the deputy court, deputy town clerk down to the $1,300 well before this administration took office. So that, that money was reduced and then more importantly the last month in 2013 the deputy town clerk worked without compensation so ronnie edwards work never was paid because there was no money left in her line so all that being said it wasn't because of a lack of funds that things did not get done when sandy took office um, another issue the town court used to bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars. There was never any concern back when there were prior people working here as to whether or not we were here alone or not. We found it in our own way to make sure that the offices were always covered. And this town board had wanted our offices to be open four days a week, which we were. We all covered for each other when someone had to go out to the bank. Um, so there wasn't anybody here. But now things are changed. The rules change based on the players. And unfortunately so, that because there are new players, there's different rules. So with that, and again, I would like to say thank you to Carol McLean for her many years of service to the town as the town clerk, for Ronnie Edwards for her many, thanks, for her many years of service to the town. The woman who, Heather, I don't know, remember her last name, she was here maybe a couple years and she got a day named after her. Well, you know what? I, I think that going back to the work that Carol McLean put into this town, um, I think there should be someone to look into where the plaque was that was given to Carol in recognition of her work building this town hall and bringing the town to where it is in this beautiful setting. And I'm sorry, but I think that that is low back burner on this, some of this board's priority. And, you know, you're gonna name a day after a planner who was here for a couple years. And thank goodness, we, there was something done for Irma Mastrian for all of her years of service to the town. Um, her daughter put something on for her because we had no idea, she had no idea if anything would ever be done on the, with this town board because of whatever, whatever the reason may be. But it was nice that there was a recognition at least admitted. But again, the players change the rules and that's what I think is important. Thank you. Additional comments? Additional comments twice. Yeah, I will. I will right now. Just to get this on record, Patrick Mooney again, and his road. So I, I get this straight that the town board now is going to abandon the eco, which you've already spent fifteen thousand dollars on, instead of working for a couple more years and maybe spending another additional five to do the last three chapters. Is that correct? That's what we're planning on doing. I just want to make sure we get this on record that we're throwing fifteen thousand dollars away. Thank you. So speak up, Bob. I said I didn't understand it to be that. To be what? But that's just throwing it away. We didn't want to have a public hearing until we had the last three chapters gone over. I, I can't explain it for about the 50th time. Okay. The contract I can't understand over. it either, so. You read the contract. You read the book. You were here for all the presentations. You were here for every step of the way. 
We've had plenty of time to go over those last three chapters. And again, Bob, you know, as a matter of fact, I think the one agenda, one motion was to cancel agenda meetings. When did you want to do this? Well, we weren't going in agenda meetings. <laughs> when were we doing them? No, these last few agenda meetings, we haven't been doing anything. We were going to do it uh, the last time you called an agenda meeting. We never got to it. I brought my e-call book and we never opened the book. So when we can get those done, then I think then we can move forward. But I think it's foolish to move forward when we haven't finished it. Why are you so opposed to this, Mike? So opposed to what? Doing these last three chapters. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I asked you. You voted no. The idea was to bring, make minor changes, more format changes to these laws. They weren't to change the major context of the laws. That's not true. Okay, I'm not going to do that. That's not true. You voted down. When you, when, you, when, you, when you go with the code, this is the opportunity you have to make the changes in the laws mm -hmm. right? and do it under one public hearing. Right. That's, that's, that's what this was about. Understand and exactly. I'm not opposed to that. Uh, we understand exactly what was under. And I understand exactly the timeline. I understand exactly the contract. I understand exactly everything there was to do. And we followed it. Exactly. And what you gentlemen don't seem to understand is that when you play around with anything that has to do with land use in the law, about. You have to do seeker, and it's a much more complicated thing than changing capital letters and non substantive changes that we've done in the other laws. To do these three major laws and tweak them means that you're opening up a can of worms in terms of complexity of what necessary. And that's why. It's going to take so long to do them. If we just go ahead, keep the laws that are on the books, and then change them one at a time, site plan review, subdivision, zoning, then, and yeah, you got to have a public hearing for each, but at least you're not going to do a data dump on the public that says, okay, we're making all of these changes. So, Mike, was there anything you ever said that was wrong? You know, well, it, it's not complete. Right? When you're changing zoning, subdivision, or site plan review, first, you have a comprehensive plan. So all of your zoning changes have to be consistent with your comprehensive plan. In order to do that, you generally, when you're changing zoning, is you have a zoning review committee. They generally suggest the changes to the town board. And it, it doesn't generally originate in the town board. Uh, the town board can originate the ideas for zoning changes, then you make your referrals. You can refer them to planning, zoning board of appeals, county planning, and to uh, any directly affected property owners. So your basic chapters don't require them. So there is a lot more in addition to the seeker review depending on what you do with those changes to those chapters. It would either be a very simple seeker process or a more involved process. So what we have now without affecting those chapters actually allows you to do the codification of the existing laws without a secret process. Right now, no land use is changed, so it becomes a type two action for secret purposes that doesn't require a separate secret review. It doesn't require referrals to planning, zoning, county planning, and, and all those, those other agencies. Right. Uh, so there is a balance there, and, and there's, so there's some uh, mix it, and, and 
many respects easier to do the gatification now. Without just keeping the laws that we have on the book. Right. Yeah. The ZRC, by policy and past practice in Princeton, because I think Bob Carroll and I don't know who else was on the ZRC at the time you did the updates to those laws, they submitted them to you and you passed them. I was never on the ZRC. I didn't say you were on the ZRC, Bob. They said you missed all the ZRC in 2006 handed you the laws that they updated. You guys, yes, no, made changes or not, but they built it. And then you passed it. That's the same process we're trying to ask that we follow, that we follow now. I mean, I've asked you guys to participate in ZRC meetings. They asked you to participate in the comprehensive plan. I'm asking you to participate anywhere. But in the meantime, we had to keep moving the stick forward. I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I don't. It's, all we're doing is putting some minor changes, putting them on the website. That's it. It's not it's rocket science. It's nothing. It's just. Lou, when you came into office, did you get a code book? Yeah. When you came into office, you got a code book? Not now. I asked when you came into office, did you get a code book? I got it after I asked for it, yeah. I didn't get one. And the ones we have, I think everybody's got, is there so many versions of codes in there? It's all over the place. We're just asking for trouble. You know, part of general code is we went back to New York State and found what was filed or what wasn't filed or the comp the, the, the differences and put it together and said, these are your current laws. These are the suggested format changes we're going to make. They put them on uh, onto the soft copy and they put them up on the website. It's just a search tool. Just, you know, and we should still follow, and I strongly, and I'll do it any day you want, follow the ZRC, which is the process dictated by the state, dictated by Princetown. That's what we're trying to follow now. I, I just struggle with this. It's like, oh, it's just putting it on the website. That's it. Excuse me, Mike. Sorry to interrupt. Um, this is about to go in about a minute. I just want it for the record in case the battery does go. Okay, because I don't have a backup. I think it's time to uh, make a motion to adjourn. All right. All right. Sorry for my ex exasperation here, but to my fellow board members. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn at 9:43? I'll make it for a second. Uh, yeah, Lou? Mr. Lou? Yes. Mr. Doug? Yes. Mr. Joe? Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Thanks, everybody.